Hey, welcome back to Ortho Nugs. Let's discuss the osteoarthro kinematics of the craniovertebral region or the upper cervical spine. So when we talk about the upper cervical spine, we mean the occiput or the occipital condyles, these convex occipital condyles gliding on the concave superior articular surface of C1. So let's start there. So um, primary motions that occur, and we're gonna focus on the sagittal plane motion, so flexion and extension, and then frontal plane motion. Flexion extension, you're talking 10 or 15 degrees in either direction, so a little bit of upper cervical flexion extension. And then side bending, probably three to five degrees of side bending in either direction. So uh, there's some motion, um, especially in the frontal plane, but is, is somewhat limited. So let's go back to flexion and extension. So since we're talking about the convex occipital condyles on the concave superior articular facets of C1, it's going to be an opposite roll glide. So as we extend the upper cervical spine, that will be a posterior roll and an anterior glide. As we flex, that will be an anterior roll and a posterior glide. Now from the frontal plane, same idea, convex on concave. So if I side bend to the right, that will be a right or an ipsilateral roll and a left or contralateral glide, and then vice versa for the left. So a left side bend would be a left roll and a right arthrokinematic glide. All right, now let's talk about C1 on C2 or the atlas rotating on the axis. So this is a pivot synovial joint. We have three articulations that we need to consider and we need to describe the arthrokinematic motions that occur at these articulations with um, rotation, which is the primary motion. So there's one degree of freedom. These bilateral facet joints on, on either side, <clears throat> they're plane joints. They are said to be slightly convex on either side. So it'll be purely a translational glide. And then we also need to consider the median, let's see if you can see it here, the median atlantoaxial joint right here. So this is the articulation between the anterior aspect of the dens or the odontoid process on the posterior aspect of this anterior arch of C1. So we will also describe the glide occurring at that joint as a translational glide to the left or right. So when we rotate to the left, we know that about 45 degrees, 40, 45 degrees, or roughly 50% of our rotational range of motion comes from C1 on C2. So as we rotate to the left, we'll describe the glides as a posterior translational glide on the left or the ipsilateral side, and an anterior translational glide on the right or the contralateral side. You're also getting a left glide of the anterior arch of C1 on the odontoid. Now, when we rotate to the right, it'll be the exact opposite. So on the ipsilateral side, the right side, we're getting a posterior translational glide. On the left or contralateral side, it's an anterior glide. And then you're getting a right glide of the anterior arch of C1 on the, uh, the dens or the odontoid process.